This is a part in your brain called the amygdala. Actually, it's an almond, but the amygdala is about the same size and shape of it. And that part of your brain is responsible for emotions like fear, aggression, and the dreaded anxiety, which affects 40 million Americans every year with anxiety disorder. Today, I'm gonna to show you one technique that you can start to use to change the way your brain works and to break free from dealing with anxiety. I'm Andy, welcome to Figuring Us Out, where we take a look at the hilarious, the puzzling, and sometimes downright amazing facets of the human behavior, all with the goal of finding something practical that we can take, apply to our lives, and just make this world a little bit more enjoyable. If someone deals with anxiety disorder, they're not just anxious for a moment, they're anxious for a while. It's sometimes debilitating and it is always annoying. And I should know because I have tons of practice dealing with anxiety disorder myself. For the last 30 years, I've worried about virtually everything you can worry about in this world and even some things that some people have never even thought of. So after I got sick and tired of anxiety ruining my life, I decided enough was enough and I'm gonna do something about it. And I started to apply the simple technique I'm gonna share with you. Now, anxiety is quite complicated as it occurs in several parts of the brain, but here's basically what scientists think is going on. Normally, the amygdala is always looking out for threats and it's very quick to react, which is helpful if we encounter a problem like a bear attacking us in the woods, a car that's about ready to hit us in the intersection. And our prefrontal cortex of our brain tends to put the brakes on the emotions that are emitted from the amygdala, like fear, aggression, and anxiety. And in non-threatening situations, the prefrontal cortex has no problem putting the brakes on and dampening all the emotions that come from the amygdala. But in anxiety disorders, two things happen. Number one, the amygdala tends to overreact to harmless situations. And number two, the attachments between the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex tend to be weaker. And the prefrontal cortex has difficulty putting the brakes on some emotions, especially anxiety, which is why people with anxiety disorder tend to get overwhelmed. Facing your fears is the one technique that can really work and help you start breaking free from your anxiety. And the most interesting thing is understanding at a scientific level why this works in your brain and why it works so well. The great news is scientists now know that we can actually start to change parts of our brains for the better even later on in life. So that's what you're doing when you're facing your fears. You're doing a little bit of rewiring of the neurons in your brain. When you start facing your fears, let's say it's riding a crowded subway, subway you expose your amygdala to that event over and over and over again, and eventually it learns not to get excited anymore. So basically by putting yourself into that situation or any situation that brings anxiety, your amygdala will eventually learn that there's really nothing to fear and eventually calm down and stop registering that event as a threat. The same thing is true of thoughts. As soon as you start spending a little bit of time with those thoughts, and you start exploring those thoughts a little bit more and talking to yourself about those thoughts, the amygdala will get used to that exposure and stop registering those thoughts as a threat and emoting this anxiety that tends to ruin your daily life. So how does this technique of facing your fears work? Well, if it's a situation, it's what we just talked about. It's about exposing yourself to that situation that's not really a threat and we know it, but getting your amygdala comfortable with the fact that it's not a threat. But if it's a thought, you can handle it this way. When you're anxious, stop and think about what is making you anxious. And if you've never done this before, you may be thinking, I'm anxious and I don't know why I'm anxious because I'm anxious the whole day. Usually there's something, a stimulus or a trigger causing that anxiety. And the more you practice trying to figure out what it is, the better you'll get at identifying that trigger. Number two, take the situation or take the thought that you're dealing with and start to go the distance and explore that thought. So imagine realistically how horrible things could get. 
So think about your company that you've heard is now downsizing and you could be one of the employees being let go and you're freaked out about this. Well, think to yourself, okay, there's a possibility I could let go. Is my life over if I get let go from this company? Probably not. Could I find another similar job eventually that I like just as much or more? There's a good chance of that. Could it take some time to find that job? Yeah. Could I do something in the meantime to make sure money's still coming in? Sure, you probably could. As long as you use a little bit of positivity and optimism, you're gonna realize that things are not as bad as you once thought that they were. And practicing this more and more gets your amygdala to settle down so the anxiety starts to dissipate. I'm gonna tell you, I have made so much progress with anxiety. It's still there in the background, but it is completely manageable, okay? This technique has done wonders for my life. So what you do is you take your fearful thought or situation that started like this, Then after facing that fear several times, you can turn it into this. I love you, you love me. We're a happy family. So that's it. Face your fears. Nothing worth attaining in life is easy and this falls into that category. This can have a radical effect on your life and your quality of life. And as a rule of thumb now, whenever I'm even remotely fearful about a situation, about a person I need to go talk to, I force myself to do that thing that makes me uncomfortable because I want my brain to start to realize it's not a real threat. And when you expose yourself to fears, that's what happens. We recover, we get better, we start to break free from anxiety. So if you think I've earned it, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the red button below. Clicking subscribe just simply is a way for you to support my channel. I release a new video every two weeks geared towards understanding the human condition in the hopes to improve it. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be interesting, and it's definitely gonna be practical. Hey, thanks for watching.